sacred spaces is just seeing people walk around numbed out, zoned out, robots, not even remembering where we came from right. or what these sacred spots actually have to offer us other than you know, art, you know, infrastructure and architecture. I agree. There's been a great forgetting part of uh, the system's control. And when I say system, I mean there's a greater system than any political, governmental piece that's playing out. These horses are a great representation of humanity, actually. We think we're free. <laughs> it's so true. And yet we're pulling the big heart of capitalism. With our blinders With our on. blinders on. This is a perfect metaphor, allegory, whatever, for the human condition. Horse is one of the wildest animals broken into service for an industrial machine. Poor guys, poor us. Right, buddy? Taken from Egypt. <laughs> but that's what they used yeah. to do. They took all the. Uh, that's totally from, Egyptian. <laughs> well, if you go to the Vatican, you have one of the biggest ones in the world that they took from Egypt. Actually, there's three uh, very similar, and they're in three different places. One is in Washington, one is in uh, Rome, and one is in France, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. So behind me is uh, Venice Square with the Palace of Venice. So this is uh, a war mem memorial built at the end of the 19th century. Which is called the Vittoriano, the most famous monument of architecture and art to serve some of the most sacred memories of the Italian people. This great symbolisms, this Lioness with wings. So these are old ruins from the Roman times. It was a part of like, I love visiting sacred sites, you know? And I like looking for uh, spiritual, esoteric things. And so Rome doesn't really excite me because it's like, oh, there's all this like the domination and whatever. So it's not a vibration, but what I'm tuning into right now is power. There's a lot of powerful energy here. Different yeah. powerful energy. And I'm, I'm trying not to like uh, be in judgment around it, but there, there's a statement around for a part of the planet, like Rome, for example, a city, to really have an empire that stretches over countries and countries, there has to be a, a, a life force that is uh, pulsating, and I, I feel it. And it's an important part of our history. It taught us about power and what power can do we embrace it as an individual, if we embrace it collectively, and if we use it to destroy as well. Malevolence or benevolence, yeah. right. So it's a great, actually, uh, reflection of where we want to be going toward, uh, towards. So it's like this is, mind you, there's a lot of good things about the Roman Empire and a lot of like sad and um, horrible things. But the energy pulsing is power and that's something to be uh, revered, appreciated, respected. In this site in particular, you see the destruction of the power, that eventually, if you're harnessing power in a way that doesn't serve the collective, you're gonna go down. Exactly. <laughs> it's just, so, America, that. look at what your future looks like if you don't get your shit together. So we are now approaching the Fountain of Trevi. Came here 20 years ago, threw in a coin to bring me back to Rome. And here I... What did you say? I said, oh wow. Look at that sexy guy. I mean, that's sexy guy. <laughs> that's probably, uh, who's the, it's probably Neptune. Yeah, that looks like some Neptune. So look how many people are here. So we're at the Fountain of Trevi. So beautiful. Yeah? What else? What do you love? I love the serpents. Flying dragon horse thing there. 
interesting how they're grabbing you by the hair. Right. And I love that a woman is keeping guard with her spear and her serpent. <laughs> it's true, there's a serpent here that and it's not like uh, evil. No. Well, this feels pagan. Very pagan. Alive nature. Vibrant. Running water. The light colors. So I've been here before, and there's like a legend in regards to uh, the building. So this was a palace in front of the fountain, and uh, they said at once upon a time the people that used to live in here had a daughter, and uh, she lived in that room up there, the last top right. And you see, it's not a window; it's like a, a it's oh, it's covered. Like a painting. Yeah, oh, painting. Wow. Something yeah. it up. Well, supposedly she jumped out of that window and committed suicide, and that's why they. That's dark. Very dark. So the idea here is you're supposed to throw three coins, right hand over the left, and every coin represents something. I think it's like the love, finances, and the return to Rome. That's the idea. So it has started to rain here in Rome. A re refreshing change from the blistering humidity. I feel right at home being from Portland, Oregon. The rain? Yes. Uh, for me, the humidity feels like Montreal as well. So behind me, you'll see like a Spanish flag on that building over there. That's uh, steps from the actual Spanish steps. Very famous Spanish steps. I'm not as impressed with this as some other things. This is Stacy resistance to walking the Spanish steps. I'm literally dragging her. It's only 162 steps. Was that what it was? 160? I don't know. So, I read it. Something like that. To nowhere significant. It's very significant, baby. It's called the top of the Spanish steps. <laughs> <laughs> Another stolen obelisk. Mind you, my theory is yes. that the same power that was in Egypt went to Rome and then that power went to England and now that power is shared between England and the United States. So it's the same ruling elite ancient right. times. So this is why all those obelisks are in these significant power spots because at a certain moment after the Egyptian dynasty empire there's no more power there. There's no more power. Move to Rome. So, makes sense that Rome has all these power statues and whatnot.